come into the lungs here we can see this is the left lung this is the right lung uh, in the left lung we can see there is one major fissure here and this divides it into a upper lobe and a lower lobe where uh, this is the lateral uh, x-ray and this is we can see this is the major fissure divided into upper and a lower lobe and this is the right lung and here is the and this one is the oblique or a minor fish, uh, major fissure and this is the minor or a horizontal fissure and this is the lateral view where we can see this is the major fissure and this one major fissure or oblique fissure and this is the minor or a horizontal fissure which divides it into upper middle and a lower lobe so coming to the lobar anatomy where we can see this was the right upper lobe uh, in this also this is the right upper lobe here we have the right middle lobe here we have the right middle lobe here right lower lobe right lower lobe like we said this was the minor fissure major fissure dividing right upper lobe right middle lobe and right lower lobe coming to the left lobe here we can see this is the left upper lung and literally we have this left upper lung this is left lower lung and this is left lower lung here this was divided by on the basis of major fissure here now coming to the lung zones uh, if we see the first two anterior ribs above the line joining to the anterior to anterior second first two ribs we have upper zone from second to fourth rib uh, we have middle zone and lower the uh, lower than fourth rib we have lower zone so upper zone is uh, at the level of second rib second to fourth rib we have middle zone and uh, below the fourth rib we have lower zone now see lot sign like i said that if there is some structure which is just as adjacent to some thing here it will cause slotting of the lung so if a structure is in right upper lobe right upper lobe right upper lobe here it will cause slotting of the ascending aorta which we see over here if it's in right middle lobe it will uh, slot the right middle border if it's in right lower lobe it will slot the right hemidiaphragm so if it's in the right middle lobe it will slot the right heart border and it's in the right lower lobe it will slot the right heart hemidiaphragm if it's in left upper lobe it if it's in left upper lobe it will usually slot the left aortic knuckle uh, here and if it's in the left lower lobe it will usually slot the left hemidiaphragm here coming to pathologies of the lung lung may appear too white or lung may appear too black they could be also lung collapse so what are the pathologies which cause lung to appear very white so it could be there is some widening which is homogeneous and well defined then it could be a nodule if it's less than 3 cm or it could be a mass if it's more than 3 cm so like if we see in this x-ray on the left lung we can see this is the left upper uh, sorry right lung this is the right upper lobe and this we can see there is some opacification or some whitening which is very homogeneous and well defined then this is if it's less than 3 cm it would be a nodule and if it's more than one um, more than 3 cm then it would be a mass and we should always be careful that this nodule or mass could be malignant also so we have to look for its interval growth growth we have to see if there are ill defined margins if this uh, is if there is calcification if there is rib destruction if there is associated left adenopathy if there is associated pleural disease or if there is associated thick wall cavity so we should look out for all this to rule out if there is some malignancy second there could be whitening with some blackness inside and that would mean there is a cavity so the, in this x-ray we can see this is the left lung this left upper lobe we can see there is some homogeneous opacity, opacity with some black lucency inside and this is a cavity third we may have whiteness with some black line in between and this is called as air bronchograms this is seen in consolidation now if this whiteness is due, is if it's due to water then we it's pulmonary edema and if its whiteness is due to blood then it's hemorrhage and it's due to pus then it's pneumonia like here we can see there is some diffuse opacification inside here and we can see some air bronchograms here 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 inside and this means this is consolidation which was in pneumonia here 
coming to cavities like if we see if the cavity is less than 4 mm it's a very thin wall cavity or it could be a thick wall cavity thin wall usually means it's a bulla usually it's a bulla whereas if it's very thick wall that it means it could very likely be a malignancy there could also be an air fluid level that would mean it's an abscess or there could be a air crescent also this was suggest that it's aspergilloma so we have talked we have talked about nodules of mass we have talked about cavity now coming to the consolidation in which we are going to uh, talk about pneumonia so we are we have three main types of pneumonia radiologically that is lobar pneumonia interstitial pneumonia and bronchial pneumonia there are more types of pneumonia also but these are the main three we, which we are going to discuss here so lobar pneumonia means there is involvement of a single lobe of a lung and usually it's unilateral only and we can see there is there is widening or opacification of left up, uh, right upper lobe and in this upper lobe also we can see some blackness inside this is known as air bronchogram suggesting that it's a consolidated left uh, right upper lung so right upper lobe consolidation lobar density air bronchogram no significant loss of lung volume coming to this one second one here this is known as interstitial pneumonia because it involves the interstitial spaces and this will give you a ground class of opacity and this will be bilateral symmetrical like you can see this is some uh, opacification of the interstitial spaces and this is known as interstitial pneumonia third one we have a bronchial pneumonia here we can see the opacification is very big and it's involving the main central bronchi and this is patchy this is also bilateral this is a bronchial pneumonia interstitial pneumonia like we have talked about just here it can be a reticular type nodular type or reticular nodular type reticular types means like here we have very so many lines 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 here this is reticular types we can also like here also like if you can see here there are many lines 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 so this is a reticular type if we see very uh, very minute nodules or nodules this could be nodular type of uh, interstitial pneumonia so here also you can see many nodules here this is nodular type and if you see both this is known reticular nodular type of interstitial pneumonia so here we can see this is right upper lobe pneumonia here we can see this is right uh, here we are not sure it could be a right middle lobe pneumonia also right lower lobe pneumonia also we saw the lateral x ray and we saw this is in all right middle lobe so it right middle lobe pneumonia and then we here we can see this is right lower lobe pneumonia coming to here this is left upper lobe pneumonia and this is the left lower lobe pneumonia obviously that just right middle lobe and like right, right lower lobe this is the only one which usually get confused otherwise other all are is it diagnosed coming to tb tb can be a primary tb it could be post primary tb or secondary tb or it could be a milder infection in a primary tb we can have an active infection or an inactive infection if we if we find a patient having scarring and calcification then it suggests that it's an inactive disease whereas if we find consolidation with lymph nodes with effusion small small nodules then it will suggest an active infection like in this x ray we can see on the right side we can see right paratracheal and left side hilar lymph nodes okay, so if we can see this is the hilar lymph nodes this is right paratracheal lymph nodes also so we can see multiple lymph nodes uh, which are suggestive of primary active tb coming to post primary tb post primary can also be again active or an inactive here at lymph node pathology fusion are very less commonly seen here the main characteristic feature is cavitation and scarring so scarring lung distortion and cavitation usually in upper lobes only like primary tb we are we see mainly in middle and lower lobes here uh, post primary secondary tb we see most mostly in upper lobes so here we can see there is linear parenchymal uh, fibrotic bands associated with retracted hyla associated with uh, cavitation also that would suggest it's a post primary secondary tb in milder infection we have multiple small discrete nodules which are very widely spread this is known as milder tb so first we talked about pathologies which cause the lung to appear white now we are going to talk about pathologies that causes lung to appear black this could be because the patient took a very deep breath causing a hyperinflated lungs so this cause the blood vessel to compress 
causing small blood vessel as well as the heart after the diaphragm also this made may make look like the lung has appeared black so or there could be less overlying tissue that is if there was a patient who had mastectomy done so this also may appear like the lung appear, uh, ha, appeared more black or we could have focal blackness with white border so if you have focal blackness with white border this could be a thin white border or a thick white border thin white border means there could be a cyst or a bulle or this could be a localized localized pneumothorax whereas if it's a thick wall then it would be mean cavity and if we have diffuse blackness this could mean it's either emphysema or a pneumothorax third one is the lung collapse like here main thing we have to know is a pneumothorax which will we will discuss when we discuss the pleural pathologies and third one is the lung collapse so lung collapse is usually used interchangeably changeably with atelectasis but collapse is a very severe form of atelectasis uh, atelectasis means reduce inflammation of all or a part of lung and a severe form of atelectasis is known as lung collapse so types of lung collapse or atelectasis can be it could be subsegmental or segmental it could be lobar or it could be entire lung collapse here you can see the in this patient we can see there is sub segmental collapse or a uh, collapse of the lower segment of the lung and this is because the patient was in, unable to take deep breaths and this would appear as linear bands linear bands at the base of lung here also like we can see these are the linear bands here these are linear bands here and this was because the patient was not able to take deep breaths and that caused the uh, lower sub segments of the lung to collapse and appear as this linear bands over here this is known as sub segmental lung collapse second we have a lobar collapse means a part or a lobe of a lung has collapsed so there are various sign of, uh, signs of the lobar collapse the most direct or the hallmark hallmark sign is the shift of the fissure like we told now there was one major fissure here in the uh, right left lung and there is one major and one minor fissure here and this uh, major and minor fissure here that was in right lung these fissures could shift their position and this is the direct or the main hallmark sign of the lung uh, lobar collapse there could be many indirect sign also that is if the uh, supposedly this lung has collapsed then this lung would appear more whiter this is called as increased lung opacity or the adjacent lung may appear hyper inflamed uh, infl hyper inflated and this is the second point or there could be shift of hilar to one side or mediastinum towards one side or there could be elevation of the diaphragm or as well as there could be like if this lung has collapsed there could be crowding of blood vessels crowding of blood vessels or crowding of ribs also so suppose that this lung collapsed so this will pull the mediastinum hilar to itself or so this we we will see hilar and mediastinum shift because this side lung collapsed and it will pull the hilar mediastinum to itself or there may be crowding of ribs there may be crowding of blood vessels also so these all are indirect sign direct sign is always shift of the fissures so here we can see this is the right upper lung collapse then the uh, major fissure here it will go upwards and here the major fissure will go upwards like this right middle collapse it will go downwards like this and here it will go downwards like this right lower collapse it will go like this and here it will go like this i have shown you example also like here we can see some opacification here this could be a collapse and when we see little view this is the right middle lobe collapse here again we are not very sure but there is right low lobe collapse here and when we see little x ray yes we can see very clearly this the patient had right low lobe collapse here third point is comparing a entire lung collapse with a fusion so here we can see this is all whitening of the lung here also there is whitening of lung but if we see trachea the trachea is uh, pulled toward the collapse part whereas here we can uh, uh, the trachea is pulled toward the whitened part where uh, whereas here we can see 
the trachea is pulled away from the widened part here this because here there is collapse and the collapse uh, lung will pull the trachea toward itself so this is a lung collapse whereas if we see here there here it is pleural effusion and pleural effusion will push the trachea up towards opposite side so in this way we can differentiate a collapse from a pleural effusion so collapse there is shift of mediastinum toward the collapse whereas in pleural effusion there is shift away from the effusion coming to the pleura we have parietal pleura visceral pleura and in between them we have a pleural cavity and uh, pleura, parietal pleura also we have uh, uh, cervical pleura mediastinal uh, pleura costal pleura and diaphragmatic pleura so again talking about if we find how to know if the mass here is arising from the pleura or it's in the lung so here we can see if the angle is more if the angle is more that is it's obtuse then it's a extra pleural thing but if the angle is acute then it's arising from the lung but if it's obtuse then it could arise from pleura or it could arise from the mediastinum so pathology of pleura could be the pleura could appear too black or too white so this was a typo the pleura would appear too white uh, sorry sir this was the typo so if the pleura appears too black then it's pneumothorax but here if the pleura appears too white and not black too white then it's pleura fusion so we are going to discuss two uh, situation first where the pleura would appear too white and that is pleura fusion what is pleura fusion there is fluid in the pleural space and uh, the fluid could be transudative fluid exudative fluid or it could be a blood hemothorax it could be chyle or chylothorax it could be pus or impyemia and the thing is all type type of this uh, all type of pleura fusion will radiologically appear similar so if we, we see here here this is the pleura has appeared uh, pleura appear pleura appears too white and this too whitening of the pleura is the pleura fusion and so how can we estimate the volume of pleural fluid uh, if we first we should know there are three things this is a cost of vertebral angle this is cost of phrenic angle and there's a top of diaphragm so if we see here this angles are the cost of phrenic angles whereas if we go for lateral view this angle is the cost of vertebral angle and this is the dome of diaphragm so if we see the dome of diaphragm is normal the cost of phrenic angles are normal here and here here and here cost of phrenic angles are normal but we have mild blunting of this cost of vertebral uh, uh, angle that is this angle has flattened then we have just flattening of cost of vertebral angle but other two are normal that is we have grade one pleural effusion that is the volume is from 50 ml to 200 ml and second if we have mild blunting of cost of phrenic angle also that is we have flattening of cost of vertebral also and cost of phrenic also then we have grade two pleural effusion and volume will be 200 to 500 ml and third we have even flattening of the dome of diaphragm also that would mean the uh, fusion is more than 500 ml also so this is how we estimate the volume of fluid so differential of uh, opaque hematoma that is one side of lung is fully white then it could be pneumonia it could be a fusion and it could be atelectasis or lung collapse like i told you in collapse the hilum and the mediastinum will shift toward the collapse in a fusion the hi uh, hilum and the mediastinum will shift away from the um, fusion whereas pneumonia there will be no shift or uh, shift of the hilum or mediastinum so no shift shift away shift towards here also this is lung collapse shift towards this is pleural fusion shift away this is pneumonia no shifting of mediastinum coming to the last topic that is pneumothorax so what is pneumothorax pneumothorax is defined as the presence of air in the pleural cavity in effusion there was water or some fluid here it's air and if air enters enters through very defect vagar that is all point and then we have open pneumothorax closed pneumothorax and tension pneumothorax open pneumothorax is the one where air can move fr fle freely between the pleural space during aspiration closed pneumothorax is air cannot move freely in and out of the pleural space whereas tension pneumothorax air can enter inside 
but it cannot leave with expression such that with each uh, inspiration there is more and more fluid uh, air collection within the pleural space and that will ultimately uh, uh, press on the mediastinum causing hemodynamic instability so here we can see the air air is it uh, can freely move in and out of the pleura so, uh, in our pleura is open here it cannot move closed and here it can just go inside but it cannot uh, go inside but it cannot come out this is tension motorax so this was the x-ray which we got of the patient uh, so this was the patient which you saw in the icu and we can see in for uh, pneumothorax normally uh, normally the chest x-ray which we do we do it in full inspiration but for pneumothorax we go for a full expiration because we like we uh, uh, talked in the starting also for uh, pneumothorax we have to go for expiration so that we can see if there's some trapping of the air also and like here we can see pneumothorax also in this patient so how does pneumothorax appear we will see a visible line of the visceral pleura a thin sharp white line and just adjacent or to, lateral to it we will see no lung marking and this radiolucency is air and we cannot see any lung marking in this and adjacent lung also appears partially collapsed and mediastinum may be shifted may not be shifted it's shifted and there's hemodynamic stability that's tension in motorax so this was all i want to discuss about the chest x-rays and various quarters which we see on it 